Hi friends, thanks a lot for joining me today. Um, I have just been itching to use something that is like an older rediscovered product. Can we all agree there has been so much new lately? There's just been that little angel on my shoulder saying use something you already have. So I've been wanting to continue my I Remember series and this is where I pull out just an older palette and do a look with it. So I know I've already done Too Faced Chocolate Bar, I've done Lorac Pro One, I've done Wet n Wild Comfort Zone and those were several that I saw really requested when I asked on Twitter recently what should I do so if you haven't seen those I will definitely link to them below but one of the biggest requests I saw this time around was for the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette so this is the palette we're going to be using today this is a really beautiful palette because it's got that neutral spread but it's also got some richer shades that are a little bit more um, off the beaten path to play with here so here's what I already have on my skin I've already put on my Hourglass Vanish Liquid Foundation which oops, you can expect a review on that in the near future. I've just really wanted to try it quite a bit before I reviewed it. Um, I'm also trying this e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. So we got a little new on the face. And then I brought in my Too Faced. Uh, this is the Sweet Tea Bronzer. Kind of just a light natural bronzer around the perimeter of the face. And in honor of the peach palette, I'm wearing my Papa Don't Peach uh, blush right here. So that's a really nice blush. And yes, it's all still smelling fresh and peachy. I'm kind of thinking I'd like to do a kind of peach and plum type look today because that's a combo of colors that I really, really like. And I think I'm gonna start here with this shade called Candied Peach. I'd love to know like how many of you still have this palette? Do you use it regularly? What are some of your favorite colors to use? I know I really enjoyed that new little mini peach palette that came out around the holidays. That was so good and so multitasking. And this could really be pretty multitasking too with the kinds of tones here. You could probably find like a highlight and a blush in here. But I'm just getting that all throughout my crease. It's kind of a more intense peach color. And I already have on my Milani eyeshadow primer, by the way. So sometimes I like to do this with my crease. You know, I get that initial shade in there. It might be just a medium colored shadow and I get it really buffed out, just kind of a blown out look there. And then I'll go for something that might follow that color family, but just be a little richer to really get deep in the crease. And I think I'm gonna use this shade called Summer Yum right here. It's kind of terracotta color, it's matte. And the Candied Peach, by the way, had a little, uh, um, like kind of fine sparkle in it, but that kind of disappeared in blending. It's one of those shades, you know? It's got it in there to kind of look pretty in the palette, but it doesn't really last. Look at this richness. Now I'm getting a real toasty peach look. Oh, I'm back. Jeez, Em, you sound winded. Why are you so winded? Oh, thanks for asking. I just realized that uh, the trash hadn't been taken down. I heard a little rumbling in the distance and thought, oh my God, it's trash day. Bub had to leave super early today and we forgot to take him down last night. So I got to stop mid tutorial and do that. So if you could apply your first two shades and then just go out and take your trash cans down, run back, you'll have the full effect for this look. Where am I even at here? We have such a steep, um, driveway it's like feel like when I'm taking them down they're gonna like come back and topple over me so I have to like drag them it's it's not pretty I probably woke up the neighbors I think I was gonna blend out the edges actually with just a bare brush get it all diffused pretend like nothing ever happened. Then I'm thinking I want to work in a lot of this delectable shade right here. It's kind of a satin finish purple. Can you see how? Yeah, it's, it's definitely purpley and then there's more of a bluish purple down below that. But we're gonna grab delectable with a flat brush. And I'm just gonna start, ooh, that's a nice intensity level. I'm gonna pat this over a lot of the lid, I think, and letting my brush come up to my crease also because the merging of the plum and the peachy tones we've got going on there is gonna be really, really pretty once we get in there and blend that a bit. So I'm going for about like a three quarter lid situation here. We'll come in with something lighter in a second, so hang on. Gosh, that'll wake you up in the morning. Thought I needed coffee. No, you just need the adrenaline rush of thinking you're gonna be late with your trash cans. So I feel like on the tip of my brush, I actually got quite a bit into my crease, so I'm not really adding anything more to my little fine crease brush here. Actually, I might in a second, but I'm first just gonna 
get things blended. Also, did I mention I'm getting sick? Had a horrible sore throat. I was gonna shoot this video yesterday, but my throat was so sore, I just, I didn't think I could pull off like a string of sentences, you know? So I still have a sore throat today, but it's died down quite a bit. Grab just a little more there and just make sure you're kind of getting that up into the crease and blend it into the peachiness. Now the question is, what light shade do I want to kind of pull in this direction? I kind of want to use nectar over here. This is, if I remember correctly, this is a really nicely textured, soft shade. Oh yeah, that's going to be pretty. Go for like really just the tear duct area and then start kind of dragging a little bit up onto the lid. Gosh, that is a beautiful shade. Intensifying my purple again. This is just realistically how an eye look goes for me a lot of times. Like you kind of, you, you do a step, then you go back, you've done some blending, and then it's time to re-intensify. So I'm re-intensifying Delectable. By the way, if you're in need of a good cough drop, um, there is a kind from Ricola that actually has the, it's like a honey lemon, but it's got a gel kind of center and that was really good. Like, I didn't love the taste, let's be honest. I mean, it's not like we're eating a freaking like gusher or something, but it felt really soothing, like the thickness of that center. Now I think I'm gonna do like just bop between Candy Peach and Summer Yum. Those were our two initial crease color shades and just bring those out a little bit more. Really take the time to shape it how you want it. You know, do you want it really coming up for the brow? Buff it out. Um, I know some people really like the, the cut crease look and the real like carved out, very like architectural looking eye with lots of, you know, borders and lines. But, you know, I saw, um, Makeup by Mario, that's Kim Kardashian's makeup artist, uh, celebrity makeup artist in general. And you know, he was saying he just prefers like the blown out, blended out eye. And I'm like, oh, really Mario, me too. It's like, if it's okay for him, then it's okay for me. I just feel like it's a prettier look, like a sexier look, uh, more smoked out. Like you can still have beautifully applied shadow, but it looks a little more effortless. So that's really what I was going for in this look was a plummy lid buffing out up into those rusty warm colors. And now I think I'll use a pencil brush going back to Delectable first and just get this really smoky on the lower lash line. This could be a pretty Valentine's Day look if you need something. We don't need to literally use like pink on our eyes if we don't want to. Why am I holding my brush like way at the end? Oh my gosh. I say this a lot in my tutorials, but every time I say it, somebody in the comments is like, wow, I never thought of it that way. So I don't think I'm going to stop saying it. The first place you put your brush is where the most product goes. So here I'm really wanting, you know, the bulk of the darkness and the shadow to go out here. And then I just continue pulling inward just gently with that. Next up, just a couple real basic steps here. I'm going to use my Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlight in the lower inner rim. I like to do this step a lot, but I think a lot of times when I've got darkness on the lid or around the eye, um, it really just, maybe the contrast is even more apparent and it really helps things like pop even more. Then across the upper lash line, I'm gonna do some black liquid liner, which I actually haven't done in a while. This went from being like a daily occurrence to a rather infrequent occurrence, uh, but I'm using my Milani Stay Put 17 Hour Wear Matte Black. This wears really, really well. Doesn't seem to irritate my eyes either, which is great. So I'm just gonna go across the upper lash line. This is not a brush tip, by the way. It's a very, very fine pointed um, felt tip. And I think it's helpful to not try to always attempt one clean sweep across your upper lash line, but to do it more in little segments, little chunks. And I'm not winging this out, I just kind of want the definition here. But this um, I Remember series is something I'd love to get back to doing more regularly. So if you don't mind leaving any requests, I mean, I definitely got some good ones on Twitter the other day, but a lot of them were for um, palettes I'd already done. Like there's a lot of regular, you know, first edition chocolate bar and first edition Lorac Pro. So check the info box. I'll list everything I've done 
And then if there's anything else you wanna see, drugstore or high-end, let me know. It doesn't have to be like the most iconic palette either. Maybe it's something that you thought never got the love it deserved, you know, even in its heyday. So next I'm gonna curl my lashes, pop on some mascara, and I'll show you the finished look. I'll find a lip color too. All right, friends, so on my lips, I've got on one of these um, Maybelline Universal lipsticks. I'm not sure what the line is called, but they're supposedly universally flattering on any skin tone, and this is the one called Spice For Me, and over the top of it I put on this gloss from e.l.f. It's the gloss that came from that Modern Metals collection, and anyway, I thought that rusty kind of shade would sort of flatter um, what was happening with our eye look up in here. And I've got some magnetic accent lashes there on um, this eye, and I thought I would demonstrate them on this other eye. This will be my first time doing a successful demo, hopefully, with these, but I think part of the thing to know when you're using these lashes that sandwich your eye eyelashes, um, you've got to be aware that if you set the top part on, you know, you just sit them there, place them where you think they're going to need to go, you know, on your upper lash line. As this magnet approaches, it's going to pull it away somewhat. And I think that's why we all experience the lash ultimately connecting further down on our lashes and not sitting right on our lash line. So you're going to take your top strip, lay it kind of right on top of your eyeliner, if not just above. Okay, so now it has a little distance to come as it clings to the other set. And so you bring that set underneath, you kind of line up the magnets, and as they connect, they're gonna be now right close to your lash line instead of sort of pulling halfway down the lash because the magnet is gonna take that other magnet a little distance when that cling happens. So that's just one little trick I've realized for helping these accents work. Um, it's much more tricky if you're dealing with a full strip. I feel like I'm still kind of perfecting things where that's concerned and this isn't totally foolproof, but I have realized that where you hold the top lash is really important and if you think you can just start right at the base of your lashes and then bring the other ones up, it's likely going to pull a little further away, further down the lash than that. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this sweet peach comeback tutorial and let me know your requests in the comments. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!